Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be the fall of Babylon. Now, there was a physical Babylon that a world empire, I guess you could say, it fell when the Persian Empire took over. And even though there's not a physical empire, there is a, or a physical Babylon, there is a spiritual Babylon. Now, the book of Daniel is, has a great deal about this physical empire. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted people to worship his idol. And there are parallels to the spiritual empire. So let's take a look at the fall of Babylon. But this is, believe it or not, this is going to be actually on the resurrections. Now, after the two witnesses that we did yesterday, today is November 16th, 2024. I did the two witnesses of Revelation. Uh, let's see, what is it? Revelation... I think it was Revelation 11, or maybe it was 13. I Let's see, hold on. No, probably 11. I'm not sure exactly, but the two witnesses. The two witnesses of Revelation. One of them is going to be Elijah. But after that, there are two more resurrections. And... We're going to get to that, but the fall of Babylon has to happen first. So let's go to Revelation chapter 13. Now we read this yesterday, but I'm going to read it again today. Uh, fall of Babylon. Revelation 13 and verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, the sea of humanity, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, I think it's Revelation 14 will tell you what the horns are. And upon his horns, ten crowns. Well, what does a king wear? He wears a crown, right? And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. Because they're going to blaspheme the God of heaven and earth. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Hmm. So, now remember, Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. But this one's going to speak like he is the Christ. Or he's going to try. And his mouth is the mouth of a lion and a dragon. Now remember, in Revelation 12, that tells you uh, that old serpent, the dragon, which is the devil and Satan. So, dragon is merely a figure of speech for the devil and Satan. And the dragon gave him, the beast, his power and his seat, or throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? 
And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Three and a half years, 1260 days or so. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Now, they who are the saints? Those that believe in Christ are the saints. Now, if they're not here on earth, how can he make war with them? Kind of hard, right? And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. This makes me believe that there are people whose names were never written in the book of life. Hmm. Now, there are those that will tell you that believe in whosoever will, that all you have to do is believe in the Lord and that the, God will write your name in the book of life. And then there's others that believe in election that think that not everybody's names are written in the book of life. Now, believe it or not, there is a couple of references to people having their names blotted out of the book of life. Your name could be in the book of life, and depending upon what you do, your name could be blotted out. Now, if you were back in the old days, if you had a quill and ink, if somebody took a, a blot of ink and put it on top of your name, your name's blotted out. It's gone. So, whichever way you want to believe it, that's up to you. Personally, I believe in election. I don't believe everybody's name is in the book of life. I don't believe that. So, I don't believe any of Cain's children are in the book of life. Sorry, don't believe it. Well, not sorry. So, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So he's going to act like he's the lamb of God, but he's speaking like the devil, the dragon. 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them on the earth by the means of those miracles, miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now, if you remember the book of Daniel, when Nebuchadnezzar made the image and demanded that when everybody heard the music, that they would bow down and worship this image. Remember the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They didn't do it. They were thrown into the fire, the furnace. And they saw the fourth man in there, which was probably Christ in, before his human form. Yeah, the, you know, if you've never read the Bible from cover to cover, you're really doing yourself a disservice. But, you know, up to you. So, 
Nebuchadnezzar makes an image, wants everybody to worship it. Book of Revelation, Mystery Babylon. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon. Same thing, an image of the beast. And you don't worship it, you're going to die. Verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Um, and I cover this more in the Two Witnesses of Revelation, the study that I did yesterday. All right, so let's go to chapter 14 of Revelation, verse 1. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, would you rather have God the Father's name written in your forehead or the beast's name? Uh, that's a no-brainer for me. Verse 2. And I heard a voice from heaven, as a voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Now remember, when you see the beast rising up out of the sea, and when you're talking about waters, sometimes it's talking about the sea of humanity. Now we're going to read this again, but in Revelation 17, 15, And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes and nations and tongues. The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples. Hmm. Okay, let's go back to Revelation 14. Um, Revelation 14, 2. And I heard a voice from heaven as a voice of many waters, many people, and as a voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sang, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 140 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth. They are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Well, that excludes me, because I defiled myself with a few women before... I came to the Lord. Uh, yeah. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These, now, that doesn't mean that in uh, the marriage bed is undefiled. The Bible even declares that. And that is in uh, Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Oh, yeah. Revelation 14, 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile. There's no no false falsehood in their in their mouths. For they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, the good news, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred, and tongue, and people. And that word nation there is the same word as Gentiles, or Gentile. So this angel, in number seven, seven sang, sang with a loud voice, 
Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. So you could either uh, worship the Lord or you could worship the beast. Your choice. All right. Number verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Why would you say that twice? Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Well, mystery Babylon will fall physically and then it'll fall spiritually. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, what is this great city? Well, yesterday we found out that uh, she was spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So when you hear people say, oh, well, that's Rome. Uh, was their Christ crucified in Rome? Because when people tell me that it's Rome, their opinion, they're telling me they're, 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 their Christ is not Jesus, because Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem, not Rome, not Moscow, not Washington, D.C., not New York City. So, and besides, Satan wants worship, and he wants to defile everything that the Lord makes that's holy. Jerusalem was to be God's city. It was known as Zion, the city of David. So, you know, I, if people tell you, oh, it's Rome. No, it's not. I tell you what, we're going to, maybe we'll take a look at proof that Mystery Babylon is Jerusalem. And we're talking about future Jerusalem. And people will tell you, oh, well, when is Jerusalem ever uh, ruled the earth? Well, that's true. It hasn't. But isn't Revelation part of it future? If the, if the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the Antichrist, if he, if he comes to Jerusalem and the temple, and he's ruling the world from there, isn't that going to be future? Oh, yeah. I mean, doesn't that make sense? It does to me. Now, maybe somebody else has got something else going on, but I don't know. But I think uh, we're going to take a look at why Jerusalem is Babylon from the scripture alone. All right, so let's finish up 14. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon has fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. I mean, poured out without, poured out in full strength, people, and it's not going to be watered down. Uh uh. Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. The same shall drink 
of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Wow. Doesn't sound like uh, you want to go there. Verse 11. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. What commandments? Circumcision, Sabbath keeping, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, what commandments? Oh, all right, let's take a look. So what are the commandments of God that they're talking about here? Ten commandments? Well, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36, someone asked Jesus what was the most important commandment. And they said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And believe it or not, this is quoting the Old Testament. And then in Matthew 22, 39, and the second commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Because if you love your neighbor, you won't kill him, you won't cheat him out of his money, you won't steal, try to commit adultery with his wife. Right? And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And of course, the Hebrew roots people will tell you, oh, well, this isn't enough. No. Really? So, you know, hopefully we have enough sense to know that we're not to love the enemies of God and have them as neighbors. So, you know, if you got Satanists as neighbors, uh, maybe they should be gotten rid of or move. I don't know. All right. So, let's go back to... Uh, da -da -da. Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Now, if the pre-trib rapture is true and all the church is gone, who are these people? Who are those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Christ? Where are they? I mean, they'd all be gone, wouldn't they? Verse 13, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. So if you die for your faith in Christ during this time period, the Bible says you're blessed or blessed. Verse 14, Revelation 14, 14, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the crowd, on the cloud, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee, for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. People, right here, this is where you should read the parable of the wheat and the tares. The wheat and the tares. 
Maybe we should read that real quick. All right, turn your Bible to Matthew 13. Verse 24. Jesus is going to be speaking here. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Now remember, Abraham was told that his seed, children, would inherit the promised land. Yeah, so sometimes seed is something a farmer plants in the ground for crops, but sometimes seed was a figure of speech for children. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, Adam, his enemy came, Satan, and sowed tares, or weeds, and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? Hey, uh, sir, didn't you plant good seed here? Where's all these weeds coming from? Verse 28. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Want us to go gather these weeds up? The tares? Verse 29. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. Gather ye together first the tares, the weeds. Gather ye together first the weeds, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Uh, if the pre-trib rapture was true, how can the tares be gathered first? Wouldn't, wouldn't God's children be gathered up first? In the pre-trib rapture? But that's not what it says here. It says that the weeds are going to be gathered first and burned. And then the children of the kingdom, the wheat, will be gathered. So either Jesus got it wrong or we got lost along the way somewhere. All right, let's skip down to verse 36, Matthew 13, 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare, or explain, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. See, the Son of Man, Jesus, who created heaven and earth and everything, created Adam. Verse 38, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares, the weeds, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Whoa. Can anybody say Cain? The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there 
shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Huh. Let's go back to Revelation 14, 14. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the son of man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap. For the time has come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe. This is the wheat and the tares, people. This is it. This is the, the reaping of the wheat and the tares. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another came, uh, angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the from the altar, which had power over fire. Remember, the terrors are going to get burned. And cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's bridle, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Now remember, um, during the Last Supper of Christ, before he was crucified at the Passover, he took the bread, which was wheat, and said, this is my body. And he took the wine, and he says, drink, this is my blood. Remember? So when we're talking about the vine of the earth, the clusters, uh, and the wine press was trodden without the city, and blood, blood came out of the wine press. You know, we're talking symbolism here. So, all right, let's go to chapter 15. Uh, oh, this is an interesting one. Okay. Revelation 15, verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory, victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. See, these people paid for their faith with their lives. Verse 3. And they sing the song of Moses. And they sing the song of Moses. Huh. Moses had a song? Really? Yes. Moses had a song. Guess where it's at? It's when the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31. Let's read Deuteronomy, chapter 31. And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. And he said unto them, I am 120 years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord hath said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. Now remember, before the flood, people would live hundreds of years. But after the flood, the Lord... Uh, said that man will, uh, 120 years was a lifespan. That was the maximum. I think that is in Revelation, I'm sorry, Genesis 6 or Genesis 7, I forget. 
or maybe Genesis 8, I don't know, but it's there. Nobody lived over 120 years after that. Verse 3. So Moses is not going to go over Jordan. Verse 3. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations from before thee, the Canaanites people. And thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord hath said. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sh Shihon and to Og, kings of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. See, the Lord wanted uh, the Lord wanted Israel to destroy the Canaanites because they were half human, half fallen angel, satanic hybrids. That's where the giants came from in Genesis chapter six. That's what Goliath was, and almost every so-called preacher or pastor or whatever you want to call them will tell you, oh no, that's wrong. That that can't happen. You know, these it's just, you know, Israel was five foot tall, and uh, these guys were, you know, it's probably six foot six. So they look like giants. And that's the kind of garbage they'll tell you. No. When you look up Sons of God in Genesis 6, and then you compare that with Job 38, the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation or the creation of the earth. Adam didn't even exist until six days after the earth. So these sons of God could not possibly be humans. Impossible. And besides, who was the father of the sons of God? God was. They were created, not born. So Mo, uh, Moses says in verse 6, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that goeth, that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua, and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi. Levi was one of the twelve tribes. He was the tribe that was to be the priest tribe, serve God. And remember, Judah was to be the tribe of the kings. David and Solomon were of the tribe of Judah. Moses was of Levi. So, keep that in mind. What's interesting is... Uh, Elizabeth, who was the mother of John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus, was of the tribe of Levi. Mary was, I think it was a cousin. They were related. It seems to me that Mary very possibly was of the tribe of Levi, the priest tribe. But Joseph was of the tribe of Judah. So it is a symbolic merging of, of the priesthood with the king, uh, the kingship. And that's what Christ was. Christ was our uh, king. Christ is our high priest. Think about it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay. Uh, da -da. All right. And verse 7. And Moses called unto Joshua, and he said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, 
He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God, in the place where he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. 12. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law. And that their children, which have not known anything, may hear and fear, uh, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as ye live in the land and whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went, presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud, and the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep, or die. Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. And this people will rise up and go a-whoring, whoring after the gods, plural, of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. Uh, you know, it's amazing. When you look at the Western nations today, we have the Church of Satan, we have satanic heathen temples all over this land. And our people either go a whoring after other gods or they don't even believe in a god. When the Evidence is all around them. You know, if I showed you a 747, a Boeing 747, or is it an Airbus A380? I forget. Maybe that's a better example. And I told you that this aircraft was the result of millions and millions of years of evolution. You'd laugh at me like I'm a fool. But let me tell you something. The human body is far more complex than an aircraft. I mean, it reproduces, it can reproduce. Well, a man and a woman can re reproduce themselves. Well, not exactly, but have offspring. You get a cut, it can heal itself. It can grow. It can learn knowledge. It can fight disease. And people will tell you, oh, well, that's evolution. Wow. The human body is far more complex than an aircraft. Believe me, it is. I took biology in college. Verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a-whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me. We have forsaken the Lord. And break my covenant which I made with them. Then my anger will be kindled against them in that day. The Lord's anger is kindled against his people now. 
Then my anger will shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us? I wish they would, people would ask that question today, because I would tell them. Verse 18, And I, the Lord, and I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they have wrought, in that they are turned unto other gods. Now therefore write ye this song for you, the song of Moses, here we go. Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it the children of Israel, put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. This song is going to be a witness for the Lord against the children of Israel. Verse 20. Here's the song. For when I shall have brought them into the land, which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, that they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxen fat, then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. And it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befallen them that this song shall testify against them as a witness for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed or children for I know their imagination which they go about even now before I have brought them into the land, which I, which I swear. Verse 22. That's the end of the song. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge and said, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. And it came to pass, when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck, behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves, Ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil, evil will befall you in the latter days. Latter days, like the last days. Latter days and last days, same thing. And we're there, people. And evil will befall you in the latter days, because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands, and Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. All right, let's go. Let's go to Revelation 15. I guess we'll start in verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways. Thou King of Saints, 
Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy for all nations that come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God. Seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth for forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. I think tomorrow we'll pick up in Revelation 16. Uh, I think I'm going to close this out because there's a lot more material to cover. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.